Today, we're going to look at pornography and adultery. Is there a difference between the two? And yes, they're both sins. And yes, a Christian should not have any part. As you turn your Bible to 2 Samuel 11. Now we're going to see what the Bible has to say. That we're actually going to see them one on one. And without the other, you can't have the one. And you shouldn't have it. So, 2 Samuel 11, verse 2. And it came to pass in the evening time that David rose off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. All right, verse 1 says it, there's a time of the kings to go to battle. So number one, David is not where he's supposed to be. And if you are involved with an adultery, if you are involved with pornography, number one is you are not where you're supposed to be. You have violated the scriptures. So David takes a little walk in the middle of the night. Can't sleep. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself. All right. And I know a lot of preachers, they go off, you know, Bathsheba was naked. It doesn't say she was naked. It says she was washing herself. And you can have a beautiful woman because it says she was very beautiful to look upon and not be naked. And the very fact is you have in the environment of advertising, you have a lot of beautiful women selling products and they're not naked. Okay, they may have a bikini, but they're not naked. She may be drinking something. She may be sitting on the hood of something. She might be smiling about something. As Bathsheba is washing herself. And David is not where he's supposed to be. Now David's eyes are not where they're supposed to be. So he's not where he's supposed to be. He's not looking what he's supposed to be looking at, as with somebody with pornography, as somebody who is involved in adultery. You're not where you're supposed to be as a Christian. And you are surely not supposed to be looking at what you're looking at when we are looking at the subject of pornography and or adultery. If that's not your spouse, you have no business looking at her. If it's a picture, if it's a drawing, if it's a movie, if it's on your phone, you have no business looking the lust of the eyes. And David said, inquired of the woman. And one said, is this not Bathsheba, the daughter of Elam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? So David says, who is she? And you don't need to get into much about adultery and pornography to know that that is not your spouse. That is not the person you're supposed to be with. You are in the wrong place. And you're about to do, if you're not already, doing the wrong thing thing called sin. And it's, it's not an affair. It's adultery. It's not a sickness. It's a sin called pornography. Whether you are a male looking at a female or a female looking at a male, or, and today you know, it can be perverted even still, David knows this woman now is married. A lot of those pictures you see of women you don't know if they're married. But she's not your wife. And if she is married, we'll look at that sooner. Verse 
David sent messengers and took her, came in on and came in unto him and laid with her. Right, so there's sexual activity, a sin of David. Where he's not supposed to be, where he's not supposed to be looking. He had no I, no good idea to look at that woman and see she was beautiful. He's already married. How about you, Christian? Are you married? Do you know that woman at the workplace? She's beautiful. That man that, that's in that book, that remote, that romance now, is he a hunk? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? How do you know that? You're not supposed to. You're not supposed to. It's that plain and simple. So let's go to Matthew 5, 28. Matthew 5, 28. Matthew chapter 5, verse 28. Jesus, red-lettered. My Bible is not red-lettered. I wish it was. 5.28, Jesus said, but, there, but I say unto you, Jesus speaking. Red letters, if you've got a red letter Bible, that whosoever, whosoever believes on that, whoever, yeah, for God so loved the world, whosoever believes in him should not perish. Whosoever. That's anybody and everybody. That's Jewish. That's Christian, though there's no Christians now. That's Gentile. At the completion of the complete canon of Scripture, that whosoever could be a Christian, it could be Jewish, it could be a Gentile. Whosoever. That's the three. That's the same thing as John three sixteen. Whosoever, whosoever looketh on a woman, David looked on a woman. He wasn't supposed to. And if you got a, a, a phone. You got an internet, you got a computer, you got a book, you got a magazine, you got something that you are looking at a woman as a man or as a woman looking into a man. That's not your spouse. You are looking where you're not supposed to be looking. That's the foundation of pornography. That's not yours to be looking at. That's the foundation of adultery. That's not who you're supposed to be looking at. Now, David went one step worse in sin. Not only did he look, he took. And he performed adultery. But look what it says here. Whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her, look at the lust. You're not in the bedroom. You're not in the back seat of a car. You can look at a woman, mister. On your phone. You can look at a woman in the office. You can look at a woman at a triple X. You can look at a woman rated R. You can look at a woman rated G. You can look at a woman. To lust after her. You can look upon a woman. And she don't have to be naked. And you can lust after her. You got it? I didn't say she was naked. I didn't say you were in a bedroom. I didn't say you were in a motel. I didn't say you were in a hotel. I didn't say you were... I'm saying is you're looking at the wrong person. Now, David was in the wrong spot. You can be in the wrong spot of pornography and adultery, and it does not have to be a bed. It does not have to be the backseat of a car or wherever. And there doesn't have to be nudity. You can be sitting at your office. You can be sitting at your workplace. You can be sitting there doing your job, looking over at that person, and you, you can be lusting lusting whosoever Look at the palm of the woman to lust after her, has committed adultery with her already in his heart. So here's an adultery without flesh, without any intercourse, and the clothes could be on. 
And, you know, if you got some of these restaurants, you can go admire a woman's body and order your meal. And you might have that favorite server. And you're having a meal. And you could be committing adultery. And you may not even know who her, who her name is or who his name is. And you, you may not know their name or it's a made up name in a magazine. Or the name that she tells you on the internet may not even be her name. But the very idea of pornography and adultery is lust. With your eyes, the lust of the eyes. So the common ground of pornography and the common ground of adultery is you are looking at somebody who you ought not to be looking at. And if you're a single, you have definitely no business looking at anybody in such a way if, if, if you're not married. If you are married, you have no business looking at another person outside of your spouse. Pornography and adultery. Pornography is looking at images that you ought not to be looking at. Adultery is performing an act that you ought not to be doing as a married individual. And Matthew 5, 28, in the words of God, who is Jesus, and Jesus is God, says you don't have to perform the sexual act of adultery. All you got to do is think about it. That's what Jesus said. Now, it also says... It says, look at what woman to lust after has committed adultery with her underlying that. So, if that woman dresses to please, if that woman has the low-cut shirt, if she's got written on her behind, fresh, or she's got the t-shirt that would make you look at her, if she dances her hair, if she paints her face like Jezebel, for the very thing for her to get a man's attention, whether they are single, whether they are married. And this goes for a Christian woman tending a church. Because I see some Christian women in church, and I see their outfits, and I say, you know what? If any man looks at you, and they have any lustful thoughts, Jesus said, that man is committing adultery with you, ma'am. That goes just as much for the men that pose and do their pictures for the women. There are Christian people in a Christian church that are Baptists out there, they will be charged with adultery because of what they dress, what they say, how they act, how they present themselves is a lure of the lust of the eyes to the opposite sex. Jesus said, that's an adultery. And you thought adultery was you're sleeping with the wrong person. That's wrong. Because that's not sleeping. That's thinking. And if you open up a magazine, you open up a printed thing, and there's a half-naked woman, and there's a fully clothed woman, and, and she presents herself to be a beauty to the male person. That male person responds with a lustful thought. He has committed adultery, according to Jesus, and she has committed adultery, and they may be miles and miles apart. And they have never, never met each other. Just as much if a man takes a woman that's not his wife into a hotel room Isn't that interesting? Adultery does not 
have to be physical. Pornography does not have to be physical. You just got to use your eyeballs. And there's plenty of it out there. Now, you you got a billboard. You're driving down the road. You see this billboard. And, and there's this half-naked woman. If you don't lust after her, you got this person that, that works at your job and, and, and it doesn't attract you. You don't have no lust for that person. You're not committing adultery. But they are committing pornography. And they may not fool you tend to say, I'm going to dress this way to... to, to Lure and adulterize somebody, but they are addressing, they are accommodating themselves for pornography with the intent of the heart, 528, to lure you in lust to commit the sin of pornography and or adultery. That's the danger of cosmetics. And Christians. So. Look at John 4. Gospel of John. Chapter 4. This is all King James. 1611 Bible. I'm giving you time to find. To read. Where I'm reading. John chapter 4. One more please. And. 16. Look at this one. John 4, 16. Jesus said, got it? Jesus said. This is the words of Jesus going to be read. My Bible doesn't have read. Jesus said to her, go call thy husband and come hither. So Jesus tells this woman, go get your husband. Okay? The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou hast is not thy husband, in that thou sayest truly. All right, he says, you know what? He says, go get your husband. She ain't got no husband. She says, you got five of them. Now, taking the definition of the scripture of, of Matthew 5, 28, did this woman have to sleep with those five men? No. All she had to do was play the part of pornography to lure those men. Did she sleep with some of them? She could have. Did she sleep with all of them? She could have. Did she have to? Not according to Matthew 5.28. You know, I heard this preacher say today, you know, a, a man only be married once to be a pastor of a church. Brother, you can be married two, three, four, five times and not say, I do. You can be married two, three, four, five, six, seven times by looking, by lusting. By being where you're not supposed to be. By having your eyes on something you're not supposed to. Just because you didn't stand before a preacher. Just because you don't have a marriage license. Does not mean you have not been married two, three, four, five times. Like this woman. Now somebody who would defend their way. Because they only have one marriage license. You know, you're taken out of context. No. Not when you take John chapter 4 and, and Matthew 5, 28. And he says all he did was look on her. She is charged with adultery for, for pornographicing herself to a man. And he took in, and he had the lust, so they're both in adultery. This woman has five husbands, and it doesn't say anything about intercourse, but with Matthew 5, 28, scripture is scripture. You don't need to go to bed. You don't need that's the dangers of pornography. You don't have to have a physical relationship. 
You just got to think it. You just got to think it. That's the dangers of the sins of pornography. Now, 1 Corinthians 7. 1 Corinthians 7. First Corinthians 7. 1. Now concerning the things whereof he wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Alright? Don't touch her. She's not your wife. Don't you touch her. Adultery. What about holding hands? What's Paul saying? What about hugging? What's Paul saying? Don't touch her. Oh, that's if that would be preaching your Baptist churches today. Don't touch her. You know, when you're involved in pornography, you may not have to touch. You can just look. Remember, remember Matthew five twenty eight, the heart, the heart. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, there's the F word. That's sexual intercourse before marriage. That's not shacking up. That's called fornication. Fornication, adultery, pornography, the three sexual sins. You know, the Bible charges you, according to Paul, if you touch hands with that woman that's not your wife while you're dating. That's fornication. If you look at that woman to lust after her in your heart, that's adultery. She holds your hand a certain way and excites you, that's pornography. Let every woman have her own husband. You know, not multiple husbands. That woman had five husbands. That's a violation of the scriptures. According to Paul. Let me ask you something, Christian. If your eyes deviate with your heart, how many husbands do you have, ma'am? How many wives do you have, sir? Am I talking to a preacher? Oh, I had one marriage vow. I don't care how many marriage vows you have. You know, there are preachers that go to these preaching seminars. They go to the, these events. And in the hotel room, while away from their family, they will rent those, those triple X movies. The prostitutes are also lining up the hallways for these preacher meetings. The, the, the preachers will purchase the prostitutes. That's pornography and that's adultery. All rolled up. One. Pornography brings forth adultery and adultery needs pornography. Now what if the man... What if that woman never antagonizes the man? The man just gets impure, sexual, sinning thoughts, adultery thoughts for that woman. That woman has nothing to do. That's his fault, not hers. That's found in the law. But if she or he antagonizes the lust, that's pornography. And if there's lust, that's adultery. And if you're if you're not married and you're dating, keep your hands off her. Keep your hands off him. That may be fornication. Wow. Okay, now let's look at Proverbs 5. And maybe I'll take a little step out of hand here. But Proverbs 5. Let me tell you something. Proverbs 5, verse number 19. 
Let's talk about the wife. Let her, the wife, be as a loving hind, as a deer, a present roe, as an Let her breasts satisfy thee at all times, and be thou ravished always in her love. Why will thou, my son, be ravished with a strange woman and embrace the bosom of a stranger? Why would you need pornography, sir, if you're married and your wife has breasts? The Bible says you're supposed to love and adore, adore and have her body the physical attraction of you. Ma'am, that man that you married, his body is to be to your pleasure. Not that romance novel. Now I'll tell you where the, where the problem is and, and you don't have to pay for this. I'll tell you where the problem lies where a man has to turn to pornography that may turn into adultery. Is ma'am, you don't give up your body. That man ain't going to do what he wants to do to my body. No way. My body, my choice. That's against the Bible. Now, I understand that there are some times when, you know, soreness, times, you know, you don't feel well. You know, okay, I understand those times. I'm not saying either the man or the woman is to be a sexual slave. But as a married partner to a wife or a husband or a husband to the wife, you have to give yourself for your spouse. It's that simple. Look at look, look back first Corinthians seven. First Corinthians 7. If you don't... Let me put it this way. First Corinthians 7. If Mary was a perpetual virgin, as the Roman Catholic Church said she is, she violated her marriage to Joseph. Because a husband and wife, she knew not Joseph to after Jesus was born. If she did not know Joseph, then that marriage was a no, according to the Bible. Again, I'm not talking about rape, and I'm not talking about abuse. I'm talking about a husband and wife. Marriage. Uh, 1 Corinthians 7. Um, Got to find this one. And I just, just remind me that I'm coming to I'm looking at forgive me. I know it's in here. And it's here, and I'm missing it. I know I am. Oh, right here. Uh, chapter 7, verse 4. The wife has not power over her own body. My body, my... No. 
The wife has not power over her body, but the husband. And likewise, the husband has not power over his body, but his wife. Under normal circumstance, if your husband wants... Under normal circumstance, if the wife wants... And if you don't give your spouse... And they turn to pornography... You are charged with direction of duty as a spouse to your marriage. Okay? A spouse can drive their spouse to, I'm trying to make it male and female, and female and male. I'm trying to, you can drive your spouse to pornography by not allowing what we read in Proverbs for your spouse to enjoy your body. And I've heard many married, married couples, oh, I don't do that. We don't do that. That's disgusting. No. No. You're wrong. Now, Romans chapter 9. Romans chapter 9. We got something. No, Romans 7, 7. Romans 7, 7. Romans 7, 7. You got to mark this one. I always think it's Romans 8. Look at this definition. Keep in mind what we've been talking about. What shall we say then? Is the law of sin? God forbid. I had not known sin. Right? We're talking about sin. Pornography sin. Adultery sin. Okay? But by the law. The law tells us sin. The law describes sin. You know why people don't like to read the Old Testament? Because the Old Testament will tell you what sin is. That's what we read in 2 Samuel 11. David's great sin. Which is legalized in America today. Which is broadcast over Hollywood. Which is in the bookstores. All over. It's not preached about in your baptism. The churches. Oh, let them come as they are. Let the women dress like they are. What's wrong with shorts? What's it doing with eyeballs? What's wrong with those women wearing those shorts? What's it doing with the eyeballs? Okay. What will be the end result at the judgment seat of Christ? You know? Okay. Romans 7.7. 7. Sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust. Okay, lust. Pornography. Adultery. Lust. Whosoever looked upon a woman to lust after it in his heart has committed adultery with her in his heart. Lust. Matthew 5.28. Stay in Romans. But there's a word lust found in Matthew 5, 20. That's what we're talking about. Paul said, the law told me what lust is. Okay? Read, read. I had not known lust, except the law had said, thou shalt not covet. Coveting is lust. Did you know that if your neighbor came home with that big fancy car, and you're like, oh, I got to have that. Did you know that's lust? Did you know that that donut shop, when they put it on the television, that new drink they got, and you're, oh, oh man, I got to have that drink. Did you know that's lust? Did you know that if you go to that restaurant and it, it provokes the women anatomy and, and, you know, you're just going there for a meal and you go there and, and you are fractionized by the, by the waitresses and, oh, boy, look how great that is. And, and, and you are thinking more about not your meal and you're coveting the meal and you're coveting the waitress. That's lust, Paul said. Yeah. 
When you got these topless bars, you're coveting, you're lusting. And that woman that's doing the, the dance and all that up there, she's causing you to lust in your heart, and both of you have committed adultery, though you may never see her again. That's the danger of pornography. That's the danger of adultery. Because you don't need to see her afterwards. All you got to do is look and burn in lust. And there will be many Christians at the judgment seat of Christ. They will get wood, hay, or stubble. And they'll be like, well, I didn't sleep with her. I didn't sleep with him. No, but you wanted to. And your dreams and your thoughts. And that person antagonized you. So they are in it too. So look at Exodus 20. Exodus 20. Well, it's Old Testament. Okay. Exodus 20. Exodus 30, Exodus 20, 2014, 24, 22, 2014, thou shalt not commit adultery. And what Jesus said in Matthew 5, 28, don't even look, don't even lust. Matthew 5, 28. And Romans 7, 7. That lusting is coveting. Look at Exodus 20. Look at verse 17. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. What's coveting? According to Paul, that's lusting. When you are looking at pictures, whether real or fake or drawn, of the opposite sex, talk about Christians, and it arouses you, you are lusting, you are coveting scripture with scripture, you are in pornography. And Jesus said, that's adultery. Well, that's Old Testament. Okay, back to Romans. Christian book, Romans. Romans 13. Romans 13. Romans 13. 13, 9. Written to Christians. 13, 9, Romans. For this thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false words. Thou shalt not covet. Go back to 7, 7. Romans 7, 7. I had not known lust. Except the law has said, thou shalt not covet. Thou shalt not commit adultery. That's Old and New Testament. Thou shalt not covet. That's Old and New Testament. Coveting is lust. Jesus said, whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after her in his heart has committed adultery with her. So if you are involved in pornography and it causes you to covet, it causes you to lust, you just broke two commandments of the ten. How about thou shalt have no other gods before me? You turn that person into a god. You want that God. You want to sleep with that God. You want to have, there's 
three commandments of ten. And that Jesus said, pornography causes you to commit adultery. When you act upon that person, try and entice you. It's that plain and simple. It is so plain and simple that it is in black and white in the King James 1611 Bible that we just must have to rewrite. You know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna state who it is. But last year, one of the biggest Baptist groups had a very big scandal. With the wrong women. I'm telling you right now. Listen, I've been around. I'm a doctor of theology. I I, I, I know a lot of preachers. I know a lot of churches, and I, I've heard of these pastor conferences where these pastors will go and they buy prostitutes. They get the X-rated movie. You know, when they go to check out, they pay for the movies. It's not put on the church account. Nobody knows but God. And behold, the eyes of the Lord in every place, beholding the evil and the good. And what you're doing, sir or ma'am, is you are cheating your spouse with another person. That's adultery. You are ruining your testimony by your actions. And you may think you're getting away with it, but you're not. You're not. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. I advise you right now, Christian. I advise you to repent and cut it out. Get rid of it. Don't get involved in it. Repent. And give it right with the Lord Jesus Christ and the blood. Now. Because it's a cancer. It's a cancer. And let not God have to cut it out of your life.